Counter story after story, right? And you're like, okay, it makes sense why people don't like the cops here. That makes a lot of sense. Like, that's nuts. I know there's at least one other dude on my Facebook that the cops show up and harass him in a very similar vein right now. So I see these little stories. And now, like, you're saying this. And I'm like, wow, is this actually a fucking thing cops do? That, like, just because no, nobody knows about that. So that's crazy. And then, look, a, a little twist on that, too. One of the dudes that was uh, always coming to the restaurant and everything like that, he had, he had like, this beef with one of the officers. Apparently, like, I don't know if I don't know if it's true or not. The the officer's uh, mother's a crackhead, and she buys the crack from that dude, and that's why he hates him. Mm. And he's always grilling and stuff like that. So there was like this big fucking like turmoil going on. It was hilarious to to uh, witness. But uh, like I said, yeah, it was harassment, man. It was uh, just the fact that we were young guys. We we're fucking making. We we're, we we're making an effort to do something good we couldn't see it that way i have a bunch of tattoos like this guy's el chapo or something he's got fucking kilos in the basement got a big operation over here uh, had a had dollar cheeseburger days so if i'm giving him cheeseburgers for a dollar like something's up over here this guy's losing money <laughs> honestly dude that's like it's still crazy because i mean it's if it happens to you, you can't be the only person it happens to, is the truth of the situation like that, right? And that's just why I, I'm kind of glad you shared that, because I feel like these kinds of things are worth talking about. But we can uh, continue on to the next part, because I assume your story does continue as you are doing some super interesting things today. So what comes next? So after that, uh, like I said, still in the restaurant business. Uh... I wanted it. I wanted to get back into the video business at the same time. Why? Because I want to do some commercials for the restaurant, and I'm like, I want. I bought a high end camera. At that point, I bought the Canon 5D Mark III. It was around five thousand bucks at the time. Right. So I bought that camera, and I was uh, I was friendly with this videographer from the city at that point, working with him. He did a couple of videos for me. He did, he did a nice job. So I'm like, I can fuck with this guy. Perfect. Come on board. I told him uh, he was using a lower end camera at that point. So I made him an offer. I told him, uh, how would I give you the camera that I got? You can do your business. You know what I mean? Do your projects and shit like that. Uh, learn the camera at the same time since I'm handing it over to you. And whenever I need a video done, you come and you help me out. So you scratch my back, I scratch your back. Yo. I'm basically giving you hardware right now. Do you guys hear what he just said yeah. right there? Do you hear what he just said? That's some boss moves right there. Now, I appreciate that. Yeah. And this is another good knowledge nugget you shared. So first of all, along the way, you invested in your own gear. And this mm -hmm. was worth investing in because it gave you the opportunity to save money along the way, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of reasons to have your own gear. But what it also gave you down the line was power moves, right? Because now exactly. you're able to go up to somebody else and go, I can make your life better. And then you can save me a couple little things here and there. And that's honestly an effective strategy to both foster a positive relationship with somebody else and get a lot of cool shit happening in your own life. So I think it's just one of those things people can think about. Invest in some gear, because even if you don't use it forever, you can always give it to your boy. You can always help somebody else with it down the line, and that is a valuable thing. Thank you again for sharing mm -hmm. that. So that's what it was. It was that. It was that wanting to build somebody else, build somebody else up at the same time, you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to help you out. Your gear is not up to par. And fuck, this is going to be next level shit. It's a dude that I'd say I spent the, the majority of that year with. You know what I mean? He was always coming over my house. Uh, he ate with me and my moms and stuff like that. So I'm like, I trust this guy at this point. We have the same vibe going on. I hook him up with the camera. And everything's going good for like a month, month and a half or something like that. Then one day I call him, no answer. He's not answering his phone. Uh, the second day, third day, fourth day, still no answer. After that, this dude went ghost completely. 
Oh boy. I don't know if he deleted me off Facebook or he deleted his actual Facebook, but I couldn't get into contact with him anymore. And this guy ran off with my camera. Besides that, the way I saw it was that he lost out on a big opportunity because that $5,000 camera that I gave him in order to invest in himself and build up his career and fucking make him a better cinematographer or whatever he wanted to invest in. And he fucking lucked out on it. Why? Because he burned me. He burned me. And now I have a video production company that's doing very well for the last three, four years. Uh, we have countless clients. Everybody talks great things about us. I have top of line cinema, cinema gear over here and the that five thousand dollars that he ripped off from me it's like a drop in the bucket put it that way and i and i i'm glad that i i didn't get take this guy along for the ride and he ended up fucking me right now let me ask you a question um because i mean entrepreneurialism is a fascinating topic i'm trying to be my own little entrepreneur and i had some bad judgment with some of the early people I got involved with, but because of that, because of some bad moments, never that, that's a bad moment that never happened to me. That's, I'd be very <laughs> irate at a 5K loss like that. I'd be like- Dude, I was pissed for six months, like I was fuming. I feel that, uh, and I love the lesson that you told because the lesson you told is powerful, but just to add to it, do you feel that it, it allowed you to have better judgment and a sharper like ability to pick the right team members because you did get burns, but you were more cautious. Like, I don't know if that makes sense what I'm asking, but like, do you feel it contributed to that? Fool me once, you know, right? It's like one of those, like fool me once. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I totally agree with you. I won't make that mistake again. Mm. Like, uh, I don't know. Like at that point, I really like uh, thought this dude was like fucking genuine and stuff like that built up a little bit of a bond. I didn't see, I didn't see that happening whatsoever. I didn't see it happening whatsoever and then disappearing act. So now that I, the way I see it, any, anything can happen. It's an unpredictable situation and it's better to just avoid it. Right. I said, I'm not going to, it's like, if you want, if you don't want to lose your friend, don't lend the money. It's the same principle. Just leave everything uh, out of it. Fair enough, man. So yeah. at what point then?